sharing with you right now how I manage my cash flow, stick to my budget, manage my bank accounts, and prioritize my financial goals and dreams. That's right, sharing this with you right now. Welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. I hope that you are safe. I hope that you are well, no matter where you are in the world right now. And I really hope that you are working on your own financial goals and dreams. So today I want to share with you how I manage my bank accounts, how I manage my cash flow, because this then helps me stick to my budget and prioritize my financial goals, which is investing on a regular basis. So this banking ritual, and it's a foolproof banking ritual, is really easy to follow. And of course, I highly recommend grabbing a copy of Mindful Money because I explain this in more detail. But essentially, there are four bank accounts that you need. And ideally, all of these bank accounts should be with the one bank account. The reason why I recommend this is because when you log into your bank account, you can see your entire cash flow situation on the one screen. There is no complicated time wasting of logging in and out of various apps. Remember, numbers, remembering codes. You can see everything in front of you. It's really transparent. It's really clear and it's really foolproof. You're less likely to mess it up. All right. So as I said, there are four bank accounts. Bank account number one is your everyday savings account. This is your everyday transaction account. The money is that is in this account will pay for all your daily, weekly, fortnightly and monthly expenses. So this account would cover, you know, if I want to get my nails done, if I, my mortgage repayment, because it's monthly, it would cover my mobile phone, my gym membership, if I want to buy some new clothes, um, get a haircut, all of those regular expenses would come out of this account. And I pay for it with cash because I just swipe my ATM debit card. Now, the other three accounts are ideally online savings accounts. The reason why I recommend you do this is three reasons. Number one, there's no ATM debit card linked. So there's, you've got to, it slows temptation. Yes, you can wire money very quickly and easily, but when they're online, you're less likely to go and accidentally take money out of the wrong account. Second reason is, is sometimes, but not always, you may get a higher interest rate paid on online savings account versus everyday transaction accounts. And then the third reason is quite often online savings accounts have lower fees than what traditional everyday savings accounts have. All right. So the second account is my financial float account and my emergency money account. Quite often what makes it really hard or throws a spam on the works when it comes to, you know, sticking to a budget and managing our cash flow is when we haven't properly planned, prepared for those but quarterly or biannual or annual expenses that catch us by surprise or we just innocently forgot us about, such as, you know, planning and preparing financially for Christmas time or that car rego and CTP insurance that's quite often due at the same time or, you know, a, an upcoming um, trip to the dentist, perhaps, that you know that's going to be expensive. It's important that you always stockpile and prepare financially for these events. So this is what account number two is for. It's called your Life Plus Emergency Money Account. Now let's talk about the life component. As I said, life happens, we all need to prepare and be responsible with our money. So you would always have a financial float which represents your life amount in this account. So say for example, this, for me this might be say $3,000. I know that this will be enough money to get me through Christmas time for buying gifts. I'll have enough money to pay for my rego and car insurance, which is due later on in the year. But there's always money in this account. It never, ever gets run dry out of your banking ritual. You always put money in this account. So say for me, my financial float life amount is say $3,000. Now my emergency money number is $10,000. This is a number that I have worked out myself looking at my own individual and family, you know, responsibilities, expenses, lifestyle, and the risks that we have in our life. Now, this would mean that at any time I want to log into my internet banking, this second account would have at least an account balance of $13,000. And it is so important this account is nicknamed correctly. So it is important that you would nickname this account my life plus $10,000 emergency money account. Why? Why? Why is this so important? It's because it reminds you that of the nice fat account balance of say $13,000 or potentially more, 
I can't just go and blow that one day or even spend say $2,000 of that money because it's not allocated for in that account. I can use it for things that are in my budget, such as Christmas time or new tires, whatever is in my budget, that's fine. But I also have to remind myself that it's not really $13,000 in that bank account, it's actually 3,000 because 10,000 of that is purely emergency savings money. And if I ever tap into that emergency money, say for example, you know, my dog gets sick and I have to pay the excess on insurance, I've got, you know, I have to take $1,000 out, that emergency money has dropped to $9,000 and I need to top it up. So in my head, I would always think I must have at least $13,000 in that account. Again, this really stops you having to lean towards a credit card or borrow money from someone to get you through tough times because it also forces you to really look at your calendar and realize what expenses you've got coming up so that you're always stockpiling, planning, and preparing for them. All right, the third account, which is a little bit more exciting, is your lifestyle account, your lifestyle goal account, such as a holiday, saving up for a new car, maybe a new handbag, maybe a new laptop, something that's important to you, something that sparks joy in your life. This is where you would put money into this account on a regular basis, planning, preparing, delayed gratification as you save up for something really exciting. And when you do this, you enjoy that item so much more because you've done it with such intention and such respect and such responsibility and you enjoy it guilt free. And then the fourth account is your financial goal account. Now for me, that is my savings to invest account. This is where I park regular savings that I know I'm going to be investing and I don't invest that money until I'm ready to invest it and I know exactly what I'm doing with that money and it's obviously aligned to my financial goals. Now the reason why I recommend having four accounts is there's not too many but there's not too little. It's the perfect balance between I guess naughty and nice. You've got some some a lifestyle goal in there, it's a bit naughty and then you've obviously got the very responsible and wise accounts with your financial goal account and of course your emergency life money as well. So you've got a really nice balance in there. Now, the trick is where and how do you distribute the money into those four accounts? Now, I will disclose, initially this may take a bit of time and patience in setting it up, getting your mojo, getting the rhythm, riding those waves before you really start to see the benefits. So bear with me as you do this for yourself. I pretty much guarantee, even if it is hard initially or a bit challenging or it requires a bit of patience, you'll really like it because I've shared this with thousands and thousands of people. All right, so how do I work out how much money to put into each of those accounts? All right, occasionally you're going to have to tweak this and change things depending on what's going on in your life. So it's not set and forget. But say, for example, I earn $6,000 per month after tax. Now I'm going to pretend in this example, I'm a newbie. I've never set my accounts up like this before. I'm starting from scratch. I'm starting from ground zero. When I get paid my $6,000, it gets paid into account number one. I know from doing my budget that I need at least $3,000 per month to pay my mortgage, to pay you know, uh, for food, utilities, all the things that are important to me. So $3,000 must stay in that everyday account. And as I said, I use my ATM debit card to pay for everything so I don't create any debt in my life. That then means I've got $3,000 available to distribute in these three accounts. Now. What I would do as a priority, because I need to, I'm starting from zero, I need to make sure I really quickly set up my financial float account, the life amount, and I also build up my emergency savings amount as quickly as possible. So I would, for the first, say, four or five months, just keep it really simple. I have $3,000 per month going into my everyday account, and then I would just simply transfer the remaining $3,000 into my second account. Now, I would keep doing this month after month and after month. And as I said, it will take a while to really make sure you're sticking to your budget, you know, for you, to get through the 30 days from your everyday account. But that's doable because you'll do a budget. So I would keep doing this for as many months as I need to until I see that psychological ceiling of 13,000 at least in my second account. That way I can have a sigh of relief knowing I've done the responsible thing. I have my emergency savings money tick sorted and I have my financial float life account tick sorted. So remember that $10,000 represents my emergency savings and $3,000 represents my life, my financial float amount. Now once I've done that, I can then decide how do I want to distribute that $3,000? Now, of course, I need to make sure that if I ever tap into my second account, I always replenish it. But it means I also now have space in my cash flow to add some money into my lifestyle account, which is my holiday savings, and of course, into my financial goal account. I've ticked that box of being responsible, having emergency money. So 
I will then decide, for example, after doing my budget, all right, of the spare $3,000, I'm going to keep stockpiling my financial float account because I've got upcoming expenses. I'm going to need to tap into that. So I'll put $1,000, for example, into that account. I'm going to put $1,000 into my holiday savings account, and I'm going to put $1,000 into my financial goal account. Now, once you've done this, a couple of months pass, and you start to see all of these four accounts stockpiling, you're realizing you're not struggling to get towards the end of your pay cycle where you're running out of money. Now, personally for me, the moment I have over $1,000 in my financial goal account, I'll withdraw that money, transfer it to my online share trading account, and go and invest that money. The third account gives me so much pleasure and joy. If I'm having a really tough week or a bad day, seeing that money in my holiday savings account reminds me I can go on a holiday soon. I can go on a holiday. I can pay for the airfare, the accommodation, everything that I need spending money, and I'm not going to come home in any type of debt whatsoever. And of course, I have the comfort and peace of mind knowing I've got emergency money. I've got financial float account, my life component to prepare for Christmas time, which is upcoming, to prepare for anything that might catch me by surprise, such as a parking ticket. And I know that every month I can top each of these accounts up and watch my financial wealth grow and watch my financial stress levels fall. All right, everyone, I really hope that this has helped. As I said, grab a copy of Mindful Money if you'd like to learn about this in more detail. But I promise you, if you do this as a ritual, it becomes a habit system. You won't even think about it. You'll just do it. And you will feel great. You'll feel in control. You'll feel responsible. And you'll realize, as I say, how powerful you really are. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. and.